<sighs> okay, I am out of bed for the first time in almost a week. I have just pulled in to my midwife's office to get a little check on Babe and see what the deal is. I requested this appointment because if Baby's not with us, then, you know, tomorrow's Halloween and tonight our, you know, friends are doing, you know, a trunk or treat for a smaller group, you know, to try to keep things a little bit more socially distanced. And so if something is, if things are not in our favor with this pregnancy, then I wouldn't want to miss out on doing those things with my kids and watching their joy at the holiday um, if I don't have to. So that's why I requested this appointment. I'm really, really anxious and emotional. Like I, I'm having a hard time going into this appointment. Um, I've been really hopeful. I've been in bed. I have not gotten up except for go to go to the bathroom and that's it. Um, I've been really good in bed, even though it has sucked and I've been really hopeful because things have really slowed down. Um, I haven't like had any bleeding for three days and then so I've been like really hopeful and then today of course right before I left I had some bleeding so I'm just really nervous about the outcome of today I'm trying to stay optimistic oh, it's just so hard and it's so weird because literally this exact day Maybe it would have been tomorrow. So today, I actually took off today for work because I was going to make Halloween costumes for the girls. Obviously, that hasn't happened. And my sisters did it for me, actually. But um, today is the 30th. Tomorrow's the 31st. Two years ago on the 31st. Halloween morning, two years ago, is when I found out that we lost the one in between the girls. And so it's just so weird that it's like almost the exact same timing, like down to the day, not even 24 hours apart. So I'm really hoping that the result is different this time. Last time I wasn't expecting it at all. I didn't think there was like any chance of having a problem. This time I'm like kind of prepared, but I'm hoping it goes the other way. I've been, I said three rosaries on my way to this appointment. And really that's all you can do is just trust in God and trust that he has a plan no matter what happens um but we'll see wish me luck you can see the heartbeat flickering right in the middle of the baby's heart does it still look strong it still looks strong and the baby's moving a whole lot more when I process things when I'm in pain like I just like to be alone and so and especially if something would have been wrong I, I don't know if I would want my kids here so I just wanted to come alone but I know he's anxious as well and I can't wait to tell him and oh, I'm just so oh, so thankful that things are still okay I'm nine weeks in one day I don't know if I said that earlier or not but I'm still not out of the clear but with just the way things have been going this week, I really was thinking it wasn't going to work out. So I'm just so thankful, even at nine weeks and one day, to still be pregnant. Um, oh, I'm sorry I'm crying. I'm crying like a baby and it's happy news. Oh, just so emotional. But, um, oh, guys. Oh. Uh, <sighs> I, for all the people who have seen my last video and have been praying, I cannot thank you enough. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. 
this has been really hard and fortunately um she looked all around for a bleed couldn't find anything obvious um and so she's not really not sure where it's coming from and since it's still happening instead of going on modified bed rest this next week I am again on full bed rest and she wants me on full bed rest um until 14 weeks so another five weeks um that's going to be extremely hard. I I don't know how that's going to work out. I think we might have to hire some help or really rely more on family and friends. Because um, I know Dan is struggling. It's been really hard on him having to care for the kids and do dinner and clean and bedtimes and just get everything, you know, together. I know it's been really, really hard for him. And, of course, I'm so helpless. I can't do anything. So, I don't know. We need Mama's helper. <laughs> I don't know how single mothers, single fathers do it. You guys are rock stars. You guys are superhuman. Alright, so I oh. am back home in my resting place, my bed, which is going to be my new home for the foreseeable future, um, and I'm like sitting here just thinking about Halloween and, you know, the little festive parties that are like going on tonight, and I'm not going to be able to go to them, and I'm having, <laughs> I'm having trouble like coming to terms with that because I know that being in bed and doing what I need to do to keep this baby safe is what's best. But I also have two living beautiful babies. And I mean, they're all living. But you know what I mean. Two um, out of the womb living babies. And like they're going to be dressed up and just walking around all cute. And I just, I hate to miss that. Like as a mom, I just... I want to be there for all the things and all the joy and it's just going to be so hard missing that. I've thought about maybe like getting a wheelchair or something so that I can still like participate, but I don't know where I would get that. I'm like trying to think of any way to make it possible to like do what I need to do for this baby and be there for my other babies. And it's just cut hard, you know, coming to terms with the fact that you can't do everything and you can't, you know, be there for everything. And it's just so hard as a mom. Um, I'm sure there are some people who've had to miss out on so many other things in their children's lives. And I can't imagine, you know, like um, people in the army, people who are stationed overseas and they miss all of their kids, you know, big events and how hard that must be, not just for you know, them, but for the people at home too and and the kids. And I know that just being on bed rest this last week has taken a toll on my kids. Like, I can tell that they're already over in a week. at the By the end of the week, you can tell that they've changed on what they rely on and the things that they're doing. And it's just, I mean, it's crazy cool to see how adaptable kids are. They are so just fluid they are so liquid they can mold and be flexible and they are so much more resilient than adults are I think like it is just so amazing but it's also just crazy to think that you know their habits can change in just a short amount of time but obviously they do come to visit me and they'll watch a movie with me for at lunchtime or just come get some cuddles or um, Isabel will bring some of her um, school stuff in here and we'll do school. We've done some board games. Like it hasn't been all horrible. I still do get to see them. So I, is thankful. I am thankful for that. But I guess I'm just touching on the fact that I am having a hard time on the things I'm going to miss out on. And it's a small price to pay to carry a beautiful baby. But it is still hard and my sympathy and my prayers are going out to all those other people out there who are also in the same situation or have who have lost or, you know, are just also struggling because it sucks to feel helpless and be struggling. It sucks to feel helpless and be struggling and 
just in the state of mind. So my prayers are going out for you too. Again, if you have tips on bed rest, send them my way or shows or anything that you think would be good. Um, apparently I have five more weeks of this, so send it my way. Bye.